I thank you, Father, for everyone listening. Those in their offices, those who are in uh, commuting, those in their homes, and even the audience we have here today. Thank you for what you're set to do. We receive your word today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Okay. So when the Lord gave me the theme, City Takers, it, it, um, it took me on a journey to begin to explore what it is that God is really uh, saying and what is on his heart. Last year, we talked about Bishop Joshua. And I have been teaching and preaching about this concept of a Joshua generation. And I believe that uh, the church worldwide, particularly in Nigeria, is in a season where God is redefining or, or showing us his pattern for doing and being church. And that God is raising a new generation from the church who will really understand what it takes to impact and influence society. I believe that before Jesus returns, Micah 4 will be accomplished, will be fulfilled, where he says the mountain of the Lord's house will be ex exalted above every other mountain. I believe that Jesus' command and Jesus' uh, uh, command in Matthew 28 is not just a great suggestion. It's a great commission. And that his desire is that we indeed go and disciple all nations. And that's God's design and that's God's plan for, for, for us. And I want to begin to bring us in some practicalities of what it takes to really take the city. So when God uh, called on Joshua to lead a people into Canaan, to lead a people into a new civilization, into a new way of being a nation, when God called Joshua to lead a generation that had been born in the wilderness into a new experience of, of literally coming into dominion in a, in a new terrain or coming into uh, a new environment where they needed to do life differently from the wilderness. I believe that that picture is, is very, very applicable to the church right now. So that God is saying beyond what happens on Sunday morning and beyond what happens in our wonderful services, we need to begin to know how to enter certain spaces and certain environments, certain uh, uh, environments different from just the church room or the upper room. <laughs> the upper room experience is good enough, but I tell you uh, it, it, that there is much more than the upper room experience. We must begin to get to the boardrooms. We must begin to get into the other rooms in society. We need to begin to get into the places where conversations must be heard. The reason why God is emphasizing this is because uh, the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. That means that the physical space belongs to God. God created the heavens and the earth. So the earth belongs to God. In Psalm 24, the Bible tells us clearly that the earth is the Lord's. So God wants the earth back. He wants to restore the earth. He wants to restore the earth because he created it for his purpose. Sin and the, and the fall of man caused the earth to depreciate and has left our present physical space in a state of deterioration. But the, the, the plan of God is to restore the earth. The earth is the Lord. Psalm 24. But he says, and its fullness thereof, everything in the earth belongs to God. Every animate or inanimate thing in our present earth belongs to God. But the Bible also says, the world's and the people who dwell in it. Psalm 24. The world and the people who dwell in it. So you see three dimensions of, the, of, the, of what God owns or that which belongs to God according to Psalm 24. So you see the earth, then you see the world. The world. The world there is not talking about the physical earth. The world there is talking about the systems and the, and the spheres and the arrangement that cause for human interaction. So the earth is a physical place, but the, the world is, uh, is a way of doing life in that physical space. Hallelujah. The earth is a physical space, but the world is how human coexistence happens. The arrangement of the cosmos. So the earth belongs to God, but God also wants to own the world. 
or he wants to recapture the world for the use of the word. But we then see the Bible going on to say that and the people or those who dwell therein. So that gives you the third dimension. He owns the space, the earth. He owns the systems, the world. But he also wants to own the souls. Oh, hallelujah. So, he owns the space. He owns the, the systems or the world. But he wants to own the men. Or he wants to rule in the hearts of the men that dwell in the earth. Of these three dimensions, I tell you, the souls of men is more important to God than even the earth itself. The earth was created because of men and not men because of... The, 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 do, you, do you get that? And not the other way around. The earth exists because God wanted to put his image, his, his uh, creation called man in the earth. And so if you understand the fall of man, what really happened was that as a result of the man for whom God created the earth, as a result of the fall of the man, the earth became a place that lost value. If you could walk on the camera so that it's straightened up. Is somebody observing that? Not you? Who's on the camera? Bless you. <laughs> okay, so the earth became a place that God created so that he can put man in it. So when man fell, when man lost it, what happened was this, God began a restorative process. Because of the fall of man, the earth became a place that was, that was, that was subject to decay. It was the sin of man that affected the earth. That's why God did not curse the man. God cursed the earth. They said from the, the, the earth began to bring forth thorns, and the earth began to depreciate as a result of the sin of man. So for God, in his restorative process, he wants to restore man first. And if he restores the man, then we are sure that the earth will be restored. Oh, hallelujah. In his restorative process, he's not going to restore the earth first. It, it, the earth is just a consequence of a fallen man. So if you can get man back to his original position, then we are sure the earth will be restored. Oh, somebody say amen to that. And so that's what God is doing in his restorative plan. And that's why the kingdom of God begins with God ruling in the hearts of men. When God wants to bring his kingdom, he's not first interested in the physical space. He's interested in ruling in the hearts of men. So that how we lost it is that we disconnected from God. Man disconnected from God. And so what God wants to do is to reconnect with man. That's why the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That doesn't sound like a physical place. Oh, talk to me right now. The, it, it's righteousness, which means righteousness is that which brings man into right standing again with God. That's which, which connects man back to God. Is anyone getting this? Righteousness is that which realigns man with the, with the heart of God. Righteousness, peace, peace with God, peace from God. That soul tranquility that comes from knowing that you are reconciled back to God. And when you have peace with God, you'll have peace with yourself and you have peace with your fellow man. So the rarest, some of the rarest uh, uh, elements in our world today is peace. The world wants peace, but peace is locked up in the kingdom of God. <laughs> so you've got to understand how God restores he restores the man then he restores the world and then he will ultimately restore the earth that is his plan I'm, 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 I'm getting excited he restores the man then he restores the world in which the man lives in and then he ultimately restores the earth or let me say it differently he restores the soul and then he restores systems, and then he will ultimately restore spaces. 
When Jesus returns in his glory, that will be the ultimate because he would have restored souls. He would have restored systems. And now he will come and sit on the throne, the physical throne of David. And then he will rule the world. He will rule the earth. And everything will be restored. And then we can say the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Somebody say amen to that. So when we talk about taking cities, we must not misunderstand what it takes, what it means. And, and that's what I want to use this session that I have, the brief time I have, to just give us an understanding of what it means to take the city. So I'm just going to call this taking the city. Look at someone and say, are you ready to take the city? Now, so when you hear the word city, it, it, it represents different things, but in the analogy I've just drawn, you need to then understand that the city here is primarily talking about the systems. The systems that run the world. I've talked to you about the earth. I've talked to you about the, the systems. And then I've talked to you about the souls. Now the thing about the systems that run this world is that they are like, it's like the software that influences the souls. That influences the men that live in the world. So government is a way of doing life. Media is a system, is a sphere, is, an, is, is, is a way of, of telling stories and, and it's the way, is how we tell stories, the stories we tell and how we tell them. Entertainment is how we celebrate and how we, how we enjoy the, the, the beauties of creativity. <laughs> Education is how we learn. Government is how we make sure that human beings are protected and laws are put to make sure that rights are protected and that resources are, are made available and people are protected and lives, people can coexist. That's government. The economy talks about how we exchange goods and services and benefit one another through our, our, the value we bring to the marketplace. The family talks about how we procreate, how we live within those uh, uh, basic cluster that God has designed so that people are shaped. So family is a basic part of society because it's from family that you are able to, uh, uh, you know, receive the culture or receive the first level training you need. So he said, I know Abraham that he will teach his sons and his daughters after me. So all of these systems and different ways of doing life is, is very important to God's agenda in restoring his kingdom in the earth. So you cannot talk about human existence or you talk until you talk about the fact that we live within these spheres, we live within these arrangements. You were educated because there's an educational system. You were, you were taught your culture because there's a family system. You are able to move around in society and be protected because there's a governing system. Or oh, am I helping anyone? You are, you are able to, to uh, uh, share information and tell stories because there is a media system. You are able to enjoy fun and enjoy creativity and arts and the beauties of, of creativity and, the, and the, 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 the joy that comes from, from celebration because there is an entertainment space. We're able to create and solve IT solutions and IT problems and to call, solve human problems because there's an IT space or a system. Having said that, we then need to understand that in taking the city, God is saying, I want to raise up a people who are able to enter into these systems so that they can bring about my purpose. Let me not get ahead of myself. So what is taking the city? Now, when we hear taking the city, I want to tell you what it is not so that you can understand what it is. Taking the city, it is not to topple the government. Oh God, what a good time to teach this. It is not what is happening in Afghanistan. It's not the Taliban regime. That is not taking the city. Claire, Kapish, you get it? That is not taking the city. That's not what we're talking about here. It is not. 
It is not conquering human beings. That's not taking the city. So because when we hear the, the term, take the city, we almost come from that place. We, we, we walk with the reference we have. It's not conquering human beings. It's not dom, it is not uh, domin, domin, dominionism or some rule of trying to, do, to have dominion over people. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28, God did not say to man, have dominion over other men. He said, have dominion over the earth, over the things that creeps in the earth, over the fish in the water. Have dominion. So the dominion mandate is not about you domineering over people or, or, or ruling over people forcefully. That's not the dominion mandate. So when we say we're taking the city, it is not to Christianize the city. Oh my. So that we say this is a Christian city. It's not necessarily that. Now God may give us such privilege like what we saw last weekend. That a king was installed and he literally declared that the kingdom that he, he is supervising over has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. I'll come to that in a bit. But you need to deal with that mindset. When we say we are taking the city, it doesn't mean that we want to cause every city or every government or Lagos to become a Christian city. I'll explain. It is not, uh, the, to take the city is not Christians running every aspect of society or running everything. Because there will be people who are not Christians who will operate by godly principles. Oh, guys, are you getting what I'm saying? So when we say we are taking the city, we are not talking about necessarily that Christians must run every aspect of society. I'll come to what it is. When we say it's, it's not, when, when we say taking the city, it's not a physical battle for cities. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Would multiply me to help me. Second Corinthians 4, 10, 4 and 5. It says the, the weapons of, we, okay, let's, let me just go there. Is somebody getting anything from this? We want to establish this so that you can understand. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Ooh. For the weapons of our warfare, so it did not deny the fact that we are at war. We are at war, but it's a different kind of war. Oh, am I helping anybody? He said the weapons of our warfare. So it already connotes that we are at war. But it begins to tell us that the weaponry, the, 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 our warfare is not physical. We are not some guys trying to take over some physical territory in the name of war. In the name of trying to carry out our agenda. Now some religion and some terrorists and some uh, activists and some uh, what are they called right now? Extremists have taken on that and that's not our model for taking cities. Ooh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. We have weapons. These weapons are mighty in God. So you look for that weapon, that weaponry or that, that arsenal in God. For the pulling down of strongholds. It begins to tell us what we are up against. We are up against strongholds. <laughs> There's no building in the city of Lagos that is called stronghold building. That we are going to pull down. So this stronghold is not in the realm of just the physical. <laughs> when you impact on the spiritual, you ultimately get physical space. Don't get me wrong. But we don't start with physical space. We start with an understanding of the spiritual. That's why I said last night, we take the kingdoms, we take the city spiritually first. And that's why the, the man that we are targeting and that we're trying to, you know, uh, uh, reach is a spiritual being. So everything you see stems from that realm of the spirit. It's not carnal, but mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds so when you pull down strongholds, you are taking the city. 
Ah, yes. What are strongholds? What holds people strongly? <laughs> what captivates hearts, cultures, mindsets that captivate people and hold them down in a mindset and a way of thinking? It's a stronghold that influences people to think that you have to, you have to, you know, be corrupt to be rich. It's a way of thinking. We come against strongholds. We cast down arguments. That doesn't sound to me like something physical. It's about ideologies. There is a way of thinking. The Bible says we cast down arguments. Every day you wake up, there's an argument against your values. Oh, am I talking to someone? Every day you go to work in the marketplace, there is an argument against your belief. There is an, an attempt to produce a superior narrative that counters your Christian and kingdom values. So our warfare is to counter those arguments. Hallelujah. He said, we, 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 we come up against struggles, casting down, which means these struggles are so high. They, are so, they have been elevated in society that we, we are, they, are so, they look like the, the good is called bad and the bad is called good because of these strongholds. And everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, there is the knowledge of God we have. But there is the no, there's a different knowledge that the world operates by. The knowledge we operate by is not information, it's revelation. <laughs> we operate by revelation. The world operates by just information. Now, we use information as believers because we already have revelation. And then because we have revelation, we come by a higher level of knowledge. And that's why the Illuminati and the wise men of this earth will always represent their, 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 their ideology by light or by knowledge because knowledge talks about light. And so the world is throwing at us certain expressions of knowledge and they want to counter the knowledge of God. But it doesn't matter what knowledge the world has. It's still darkness. Because any knowledge you have outside the knowledge of God is darkness. When Eve opened her eyes to a new world, she opened her eyes into darkness. What Satan said, your eyes will be opened, was actually that your eyes will be blinded. Or am I talking to anyone in here? So as kingdom people, we are meant to be the light of the world. Which means we reintroduce the knowledge of God in the places where there is the ignorance of him. We, we reintroduce how God thinks into the environment where the thought patterns of this world has been influenced by darkness. So it says we cast our imaginations we pull down strongholds and we, we bring every thought to, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. We bring every thought to captivity to the obedience of Christ. Listen to me. Human beings are programmed by thoughts. That's why I'm excited about the entertainment space because the entertainment space is a space where you you introduce thoughts in a fun-filled way. You introduce thoughts in a relaxed way. You introduce thoughts in a creative way. You introduce thoughts, but thoughts are not just thoughts. Thoughts are spirit. Thoughts are spiritual. <laughs> so there, is, there are thoughts. We are in a war of thoughts, bringing every thought to captivity. So also we are taking the city, we say we want to captivate certain thoughts and thought patterns that is prevalent in the city. Oh yes. And bring those thoughts to the obedience of Christ. So if you're going to deal with thoughts, you don't deal with thoughts with guns. Ayah. You don't deal with thoughts with physical weapons. You deal with thoughts with superior thoughts. You displace thoughts, you don't destroy them. 
Oh my God, I'm helping myself. I said you displace thoughts. You don't dis destroy them because thoughts are spiritual. Spirits don't die. So our assignment as city takers is to be able to understand, if I will begin to help you understand it, to understand our assignment to go into the spaces where there are strongholds, where there are arguments, where there are thoughts that is up against the values of our kingdom and begin to by the wisdom of God reintroduce a higher understanding and light that can bring entire systems to the, to the revelation and to the submission to the values of our kingdom. You know, we grew up in those days and, you know, decades back where we, the church, I don't think it's totally the, the prevailing thought right now, but that's what, I grew up in that kind of environment where uh, the, the, the message of the gospel was about separation from the world. Touch not, see not, dress not, don't be, don't mix up with the world. And then we, we stayed in our church halls and church rooms and prayer rooms and, and Bible studies and we felt that we shouldn't touch the world. We should, we should be separate from the world. We lived and we grew up in that environment and I tell you, it cost the church a lot that over the years, the, the world we felt we, sh we couldn't touch is now determining how we live. While we were in the church, separate from the world, the world made policies that are now affecting us. While we were in the church, separate from the world, Disney World created an option for our children. While we've been in the church, singing holy songs and waiting for heaven, MTV and South City and all of the cities, they are cities, created a sound that our children and now addicted to, oh my God. While we were busy doing Sunday school and separate from the school system, the world has created a curriculum and they have created this in such a way that they are discipling our children eight to three. That is some time daily. You don't even have that much time with your children like their teachers. Oh, I'm going sir. So when we say taking the city, you must understand what we are dealing with here. We are dealing with the, the mindset that rules in the world we live today. So we had that separation theology. But I believe that before Jesus returns, there's a re-, re programming of our mind and that's what this camp meeting is about where we will say no yes we will be separate from the world in our values <laughs> we'll be separate from the world in the way we think but we will not be separate from the world just excluding ourselves from where the conversations are happening am I talking to someone in here we will not just create Christian schools and Christian church, Christian houses, and Christian clothing, and Christian media, and Christian programs. Come on now, we will create the kind of programs that can enter into any platform and we will have the wisdom to introduce this wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Hallelujah. We'll be able to tell the story of the kingdom in the media space. We'll be able to tell the story of the kingdom through entertainment in a way that we may be faceless, but we'll be forceful. In a way that we will maintain contact without contamination. Oh, am I talking to somebody in here? There is a technology in God where we can enter the world and the world will enter us. If you don't believe me, ask Daniel. You can enter the world and the world will enter you. You can be in a system and that system won't influence you. If you don't believe me, watch what happened last weekend in Worry Kingdom. It's possible. I said it's possible. If you don't believe me, ask Esther. 
Now, we read the Bible like it was, it was all a Christian setting. The book of Esther, God was not even mentioned. In the entire book of Esther, God was not mentioned. But a choice soul entered into the space of governance, understood her purpose, understood her potential, understood her platform, and understood what God wanted her to do with it. Oh, am I helping anybody today? So it's not any of these things I've talked about. That's not what we mean by takeover. Because the word takeover or take cities is a strong word. So when you hear it, when governments of this world hear city takers, <laughs> they are thinking, what are these guys really planning? Who is, who is in charge of this move? Mm. So we had a mindset of escaping. Escaping the world. Escaping but Jesus said, do not take them out. This was Jesus' prayer point in, in John chapter 17. He said, don't take them out from the world. He said, but that you will keep them. You will preserve them even though they are in the world system. I decree and I declare to everyone listening to me, in the name of Jesus, God is raising you up. You will enter the world, but the world will not enter you. You will stand in the places of authority. You will make contacts, but you will not be contaminated. You will carry the values of God into that space, into that industry, into that sector where God has placed you. And you will be an Esther, a Joseph, a Daniel that will represent the kingdom of God. If you believe it, shout Amen. Wow. So we're not escaping. We must restore worlds to God. We must influence these worlds, these systems that control how life is done. So our takeover language in church must be understood. I said in church. Because you don't go to these systems and tell them I've come to take over. That's not wise. You can say take over in a conference like this. We can say city takers when we talk to ourselves in our military camp, in our recruitment camp. It's a matching order. We know our agenda. But when we get in there in practice, we don't use certain language. When we go in there, it changes from city takers to service providers. Oh, am I talking to somebody in here? It changes from city takers to influencers. It changes from city takers to coaches. It changes from city takers to models and mentors. Because the language here is different from the language there. So Daniel proposed in his heart because he knew his assignment. He knew his assignment was to influence Babylon. But when he went into Babylon, he went in as someone who was being trained to serve the king. He went into Babylon and became a, a, a consultant to kings, became a special advisor to king. That is what God is ready to do. Joseph entered Egypt and became a solution provider. I speak over you in the name of Jesus. You are rising from the church and you are becoming one of those who God is going to use to influence your space. If you are receiving this, say, I receive it. So, this concept of the seven mountains by Bill Bright and Lauren. Cunningham in the 70s talking about the vision and dream God gave to them about how believers will influence spheres of life is an interesting uh, concept that just gives us language that gives us the ability to capture what our assignment should be beyond the four walls of the church so what is city taking? I've told you what it's not I've told you it's not to topple a government. It's not conquering human beings. It is, not, it is not to Christianize the city. It is not necessarily Christians running everything. It's not dominionism. It's not, it's not physical battle for cities. So what is, it, what is it? You know, even when Jesus showed up, in talking about the kingdom, he described it. He didn't quite define it. <laughs> he said the kingdom of God is like so go do the math. If you see this happening, then it's possible the kingdom of God is operational. Am I talking to someone right now? So he told stories. If Jesus lived in our world today, he would be a movie maker. He told stories. So the disciples came to him and said, why are you talking to them in parables? Why are you not talking plainly? Why are you not saying I'm taking the city? Why are you not saying that to the entire world? Why are you talking in parables? 
Why are you overt or covert and not overt? Why are you, why are you just nice and telling them stories about a, a man who went to sow on, on the ground? And so why are, you, why are you talking to them about a man who lost, a woman who lost her precious stuff in the house? Why are you telling them about a, a, a prodigal son? Why are you telling them stories about a sheep that's lost? That's because Jesus' agenda was to, through parables, influence the way of thinking. To tell a story that can ultimately bring their hearts back to an understanding of God's kingdom. So in describing what city taking is, it is influencing the culture, if you're taking note, it's influencing the culture of an environment with the culture of heaven. That's what city taking is. Influencing the culture of the environment you find yourself in. Don't think about Lagos if you're not in charge of Lagos. Just think about the space you're in charge of. So when we say city taking, and you have no business being in the government house, that's not your space. You start taking the city from the environment you live, work, and play. Am I helping someone? You start taking the city from the environment God has positioned you or you found yourself. It is about bringing the culture of heaven into the environment you find yourself. Culture is a powerful thing. Culture is a powerful concept. Culture is how people think and behave. The acceptable, you know, aggregate way of thinking and behavior within a community. That's culture. And the word culture comes from the word cultivate. It comes from the word, you know, to breed. And you know, Adam was created as a farmer or as one who could cultivate. Ah, yeah. So Adam was supposed to cultivate Eden and spread Eden around the earth. Oh, my God. Adam was meant to cultivate Eden and take the culture of Eden. The whole of the earth was not Eden. Eden was a planted, oh my God, was a, was a space, was an environment. In fact, Eden was a software that Adam carried. And then there was a garden planted so that he can influence that garden with that software called Eden. So that as much as he cultivated that garden, he transferred Eden into that garden. Eden is a spot on the earth where heaven meets the earth. Eden is the presence of God. Am I talking to someone? Eden is when the heart of man is connected to the heart of God and they are ready to take over the earth. So Adam carried Eden everywhere he went. Eden, that's why you can't find Eden now because the carrier of Eden messed up. Eden is a spiritual reality. Eden is the kingdom of God on the move. Edom is a man totally submitted to God and the rule of God in his heart that he's thinking at the speed of God's thoughts. Eden is a man who can download heaven anywhere, anytime. Eden is a man that can process the thoughts of God and cause those thoughts to enter the earth. So today there are still Eden carriers. Oh, am I talking to somebody in here? I said there are still Eden carriers who wherever you step into, you bring the presence of God. You bring the purpose of God. You bring the reality of you are in right standing with God. Eden is a system of, of alignment. So that wherever Adam went, there was a mast between him and heaven. In fact, Adam was a mast. You know the mast that captures your, your signals? He was, he was, that's what you call righteousness. Wherever Adam went, heaven was in touch. That's why after he lost it, for the first time, God asked the question, Adam, no signal. Where are you? <laughs> hey, Kova, prayer and communion with God keeps you in that place of fellowship with God so that you keep the signals going. God is raising such people who are priests in the earth, who know how to connect to heaven and know how to control situations on earth. God is raising king priests who will walk like Adam in the earth again. Am I helping anybody? Let me tie this together in 10 minutes. So, what is city taking? It is to disciple any people group that God has placed you in or sent you to 
with the values of heaven. I'll say that again. It is to disciple any people group that God has sent you to or placed you in with the values. Every time I talk about the values, I'm talking about the thinking pattern of heaven. I'm talking about what's important to God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The values of heaven is the will of God. Heaven totally represents God. Nothing in heaven is done that is not, is not pleasing to God. When God finds men who can reproduce his will on earth, he has found men who are city takers. To disciple people. That's why Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations. I told you last night that nations there means people groups, ethnos. So when bloggers get together, that's a nation. When fashion designers get together, that's a nation. When publishers get together, that's a nation. When policemen get together, that's a nation. When lawyers get together, that's a nation. Whatever brings people together for a common purpose makes them a nation. That's why you can be in the same country and not be really connected as part of the nation. Just because we are all Nigerians does not mean we all catch the spirit of this nation or that we are fully representing. The, a nation is a people who are joined together by common purpose. And God is saying, Jesus said when he was living, go into every group of people who meet together for a common purpose and when you enter those spaces, disciple them. To disciple simply means to teach. It simply means to model a superior reality. So when he said, go teach, every nation. Go disciple every nation. He said, go make every nation your classroom. The church is the education system of heaven. Micah 4 says, <laughs> oh, some of you are looking at me funny like, Micah chapter 4 talks about how that the church becomes that institution that is designed to Educate the world. Somebody say, I'm a city taker. Say it like you believe it. Say, I'm a city taker. Micah 4. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. Are we in the latter days? It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And people shall flow to it. That's why I believe that we're going to see a harvest of souls in the season and in the days we live in because people will flow to it because we'll provide an alternative civilization that the world will desire. He said people will flow to it. Many nations, oh, this is some nations. He said many nations, many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. The last time I checked, the house of God is the church. To so the house of the God of Jacob, look at that. And he will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. Ah, which means the church holds the curriculum by which the world must do life. We must teach the world government. We must teach the world how to tell stories the right way. We must teach the world how to do entertainment. We must teach the world how to do family. We must teach the world how to educate. That's God's design. So to take cities is when you have come to that position where you are able to disciple your, the, the people in your space. Did you know just as a Christian business owner, just making sure that everyone who works for you works with a mindset of excellence, a mindset of, of justice and righteousness and, 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 you know, good service delivery, works with a mindset of disciplines and the right routines and the right ethics, that that is discipleship. Discipleship is not just when you open the Bible and say, go and summarize Acts of Apostles. 
Discipleship is when your life becomes a model that people can follow anywhere you go. Am I talking to somebody? Discipleship is how you talk, how you dress, becoming the model for the people around you. And if you can't take the people around you, don't think about taking Lagos. Oh God. It is how we engage our communities and get involved with culture. That's taking the city. It is how we get involved and immersed in the areas that we are gifted by God to serve humanity. So taking the city means that you will discover, like I was saying yesterday, the gifts, the potential, the abilities God has given to you and you will serve your world with that potential, that gift. You cannot take a city you're not willing to serve. Oh my God. You can't take a city you're not willing to solve problems for. Yes, let me say it in. You can't take a city you are not making better. So city taking is connected to you doing your job well. City taking is connected to you providing excellent service. City taking means that if you are ever employed in a space, you know that you bring about best quality experience. Because you are employed, Joseph, in Potiphar's house, you can change the atmosphere in Egypt. I can't share all this in this session. I'll continue later. But it is, it is being Christ-like in your environment. That's what it means to be a city taker. It is colonizing your world with the culture of the kingdom of God. Go study about colonization. The culture of heaven, amongst other things, the main culture of heaven is love. Oh my God, did you hear me? Galatians chapter 5 tells us about the fruit of the spirit, that it is love. And it breaks down what the, is the expression of that, that fruit. Kindness, faithfulness, long-suffering, gentleness. And he said, against this there is no law. Which means, if you are an embodiment of the love of God, you have what it takes to take the city, to take the environment you are in. Because there is no law in any human society that is against being kind. Ayah. That is against being gentle. That is against being faithful. Talk to me now. That is against being long-suffering and enduring. They call it emotional intelligence, but we call it fruit of the Spirit. They've given me sign. To take the city is engaging society and your environment with the life, the lifestyle, and the power of the kingdom of God you carry inside of you. It is being the light. I said it is being the light. I didn't say it is shining the light and putting up a torch at a concert. I said it is being the light. <laughs> it's okay to do that for the effect. It is being the light. Light means knowledge, a superior knowledge, a superior way of thinking. It is being the salt. Salt preserves, salt sweetens. It is that whenever you are added to a people group, you sweeten that environment. You make lives better. Am I talking to somebody in here? Whenever you're introduced into a team, you preserve that team. You, 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 your boss should be excited that you are part of his staff because you are the salt. It is living. It is to be living. Living is an interesting thing. It's okay. It means that you are able to enter any space and they will feel your impact. Because when you put living in the door, it's small, but everything, everything in that whole mixture is affected influenced by that addition of a lever. Let me round off with this. To be a city taker is to be an effective witness of Jesus in your world. An effective witness. Say you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Acts chapter 1. Glory to God. Acts chapter 1. Let's just round off here. Kuvarata Shatahaya. Verse 4. This was after Jesus had spent three and a half years with these amazing guys. 
And you read how they were still thinking after three and a half years. That's why I don't blame church members. You can preach for 13 years and they don't get it. Jesus preached for three and a half years. Jesus himself, the word, preached to people who didn't get the message. Don't blame yourself, pastor. You are not the fault. It's not the fault, it's not with you. Men are men. <laughs> These guys saw the kingdom of God. They saw the carrier of the kingdom. They saw Jesus. They saw him at the Mount of Transgression, but they didn't get it. This is why I believe they didn't get it. <laughs> For verse 3, to whom Jesus also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. So just the fact that he proved to them he was Jesus didn't mean they still understood his message. That's why miracles are not the number one thing in changing lives. Have you not seen a person who got a miracle in this church and the following day he needed another miracle and he went to another church and he's waiting for the next big thing happen in the city. I don't know why their issues have not ended. No. You don't disciple people with miracles. You disciple people with principles. You can attract them with miracles. But you can only keep them by enrolling them in the school of the Spirit. Am I talking to anybody in here? We need the attraction. We need the miracles so that more people can come. But we also need what it takes to keep them and to disciple them. Because if it was miracles... The children of Israel saw a massive body of water divide. Three million people crossed. By the time they got to the other side, they needed more miracles. And they literally told their leader, we want to go back. How can you cross the Red Sea and want to go back? Something is wrong. You have left Egypt. Egypt have not left you. You need the Egyptization. Hallelujah. Look at that. Infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days. And speaking, speaking, look at that. I want you to see this. Acts 3. For those days Jesus, he had resurrected. He was speaking to them the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So he started a master class called kingdom of God. In his resurrected state, he was teaching them the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. And John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Look at verse 6. Now, therefore, when, he had come, when they had come together, they asked him, how you know people's mindset is the questions they asked. They asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time Restore the kingdom of Israel. Look at verse 3. What was he talking to them about? The kingdom of God. Go to verse 3. He was talking to them about the kingdom of God. The master class was kingdom of God, 101. But in verse 6, their question revealed that they were not in class. He said, when will you now restore to us the kingdom of... Or restore to us... I saw the kingdom to Israel. So what they were saying is, Master, that your kingdom of God you are talking about, you can keep it to yourself. Right now, Caesar is ruling us. We are under the influence of Caesar. How will you deliver us from the hold of Pontius Pilate and the Roman soldiers? So when we say city takers, some of you are thinking, how can we just topple the government? That's not the kingdom. The kingdom begins when God, first of all, takes over your heart. Hearts of men that have been take, taken over by God, those men will literally enter into systems and influence those systems and ultimately they will take over entire spaces. Jesus said to them, this is the solution you need for now. And that links me back to the beginning. Therefore, when they had acted on verse 7, he said to them, this was his answer, it is not for you to know the times and seasons that Father has put in his authority. Which means there's a time and there's a season when we will restore the kingdom to Israel. But this is not the time. This is not the time. Remember, you restore the man, you restore the, 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 the system, then you restore the space. You restore the souls, you restore the, the systems, then you restore the space. You restore the people, you restore policies, then you restore places. That is told them, this is where we start from. This is the order of heaven, verse 8. But you shall receive power 
after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will become witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, unto the uttermost Ayaka, parts of the earth. So he said, listen, when you, when you contact the kingdom as a software in your spirit, when the Holy Ghost comes, for the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When you become a carrier of the spirit of God, and you enter into Jerusalem, something is going to happen. Your values and your way of thinking is going to influence the whole of Jerusalem. That's why in Acts chapter 5 verse 28, the Bible says, they literally said, this man has filled the whole of Jerusalem with their doctrine. They have filled the whole of the city with their way of thinking. City taken is where we have believers scattered in every sphere of life, in every possible space, who live by a different set of rules, who are influenced, who are submitted to the Holy Ghost. And as a result of that relationship with the Holy Ghost, they are influencing the systems, the environment, the culture, the way of thinking in those spaces where God has placed them. When we get to that place, we'll become such witnesses. I'll talk about that in my next session. We'll become witnesses. It means that we're not necessarily toppling Babylon, but we are going to, as Daniels in Babylon, stand by our values. We're going to solve problems for the king, but when it comes to the times when there is a, there, there is a, there's a law that is passed that is against our values, we will stand for our values because the word witness means matter. Beyond just proof, proof, producer it means one who can die for what he believes a witness is not just one who can live for what he believes it is one who can die for what he believes so when we become witnesses it means we'll live for what we believe we'll serve humanity but if it means that laws will be put up that says don't serve your god again then you see another side to us we'll withstand we'll fight against the princes that rule demonic altars and we can stand and represent the kingdom of God. Are you ready to take the city? Are you blessed by this this morning? I'll continue in the next session. Somebody declare in the name of Jesus. I am a city taker. Declare in the name of Jesus. I carry the values of the kingdom. Declare in the name of Jesus. I'm restoring. I'm restoring the, 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 the environment I am in. I am influencing it for the kingdom of God. Those of you in the medical world, God is raising you up. Those of you in, in, in the schooling systems, God is raising you up. Esther chapter 3 verse 8. If I put it up, I want to quickly just read that. Listen, God is raising the people. Esther 3 verse 8, if you can put it up. Haman came to the king. And he brought a complaint against the king. Do you have it? Korava. Is it 3A, 318? Okay, oh, that's right, that's right. Ahasuerus, there is a certain people. This was a man reporting city takers to the king. He said, there is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people. In where? In where? All provinces. How we take the city is that we must be positioned in every province. Whether or not we are the top of that province is another conversation. But we must be in every province of your kingdom. Their laws are different from all the other peoples. They live by a different set of rules. Their values are different. And they do not keep the king's laws. Therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let them. What am I saying? God is raising up Esther. He's raising up a people who will take the city with an understanding that we live by a different set of rules. That we bring the law of God and the culture of heaven wherever we go. I pray that God will raise you up as one of those scattered and positioned. We take the city where we have purposeful believers positioned in places who have a sense of calling and a sense of assignment. Father, thank you. We give you the praise. We worship you. It's a new day. Thank you because from the church you are raising that generation. 
that will represent your kingdom everywhere and in every space. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands, give God praise, celebrate Jesus. As I hand over to these beautiful people.